All right, welcome back. Um, let's quickly dive into our conversation, our first conversation for the day. 25th of December every year is being celebrated as Christmas Day in the Christian Dom. It is the day set aside to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, for Christians, uh, for certain individuals, this means quite um, different things. But for Christians, it also do, does mean quite a lot of things. So we have in the studio this morning to bring us up to speed with the significance of the season. We have Archbishop of Lagos, Methodist um, Church, Nigeria, Archbishop Isaac Olawi. Archbishop, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And we also have in the studio Reverend Yomi Kasali, who is a senior pastor of Fountain of Truth Assembly. Reverend Kasali, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. And all our guests once again, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. So, Archbishop, it's Christmas. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. Um, it's been celebrated for years now. Mm -hmm. Tell me. Uh, for the essence of our viewers out there, as, as a Christian, what exactly does Christmas mean to you? Mm. Christmas is uh, an age-long event, very unique one indeed. Christmas, I don't want to go to history of Christmas. Please do. Please, please do. Uh, but if we have to do that, we have to go even to the scriptures. Yeah. Because at a particular time and uh, an era, you know, there are two eras of the of the of, of, of events in the Bible: mm. the time of prophecy and the time of fulfillment of prophecy. Mm. God has foreseen; He has prophesied through His prophet that the Savior is coming. A Savior was to be born. When you go to Isaiah chapter 9, from verse 6, to, to us a child is given, unto us a son is born, and the government will be upon the soldier. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, My Everlasting Jesus. Father, Almighty, all, uh, Everlasting King, Almighty, Almighty God, and uh, Prince of Peace, and so on and so forth. And this was fulfilled according to the scripture. Bible did not say a man will grow, a man will come. He said a child will be born. And truly, a child was born through Virgin Mary. Through Virgin Mary. And miraculously, this thing happened. Angel witnessed it. Uh, at shepherd's feet, I was in Israel. Just last week, we went to the shepherd's field. We witnessed some of the uh, uh, points of events. Yeah. And then you could, you could see that this thing was true. Angels witnessed. They sang. They praised God for the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is where celebration started. Yeah. <clears throat> that is where Christmas started. When the angels rejoiced and sang and praised God for the birth of the savior of the world. For you as savior is born this day. Yeah. So here comes Christmas. Yeah. And it has become an event over the years. And this is the only unique event that usher in new era. Because every other thing was before Christ. After the birth of Christ, it became AD. AD. Yeah, after the death of Christ. So, calendar has changed, era has changed. So, we are in new dispensation, new testament. New, we, we, we become new people, new generation. So, this is a new world. That is why the Bible says, if anyone is in Christ, it's a new creation. All things have, uh, 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 all, all things have passed away. Behold, they have become new. So, this is what we are celebrating. Christmas is unique. It cannot be compared with any other thing. Yeah. All right. You. Uh, Archbishop, you are from the Orthodox part of Christianity. Uh, Reverend Castaneda, you're from the Pentecostal uh, 
angle or part of Christianity. <laughs> but what, one thing that brings Christianity together, despite the various denominations or d different uh, churches, is the Holy Bible. Now tell me, is there something extra that you think the Bible holds for Christians, especially for the season? That's that to me? Yes, to you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 2.7 billion people on the face of the earth who celebrate Christmas today, regardless of the time zones, Orthodox, Pentecostals, Episcopal, Catholics, whatever, because Christmas unites us all, regardless of our doctrinal differences here and there. We all agree that Christ was born as a child, a son was given on Easter. There are two things that I like so much about what um, the Archbishop, my Lord Archbishop has said in Isaiah 9 verse 6. Two things, two events the birth of a child, the gift of a son. So we do two celebrations globally, <coughs> Christmas and Easter. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. He said, but today we're celebrating the, the birth, birth of a child, globally. Now, for, for, for many Christians all over the world, um, there's a general <coughs> notion that, okay, it's time for holidays, time for soul searching, time for deep reflection. But Christmas should also, which is my own message, be personal beyond being general. Generally, all over the world is celebrated, but personally, which is what um, my Archbishop was trying to say, people should think deeply and reflect about their personal relationship with this child that was born over 2,000 years ago and what it means to us individually and personally. So for me, it's, it's fantastic, one of the most celebrated festive seasons on the face of the earth. You, you, you know, I, I've, I've, all, I've all often had this concern about certain Christians, uh, yes. certain Christian, uh, I wouldn't want to use the word factions, um, certain Christian that, uh, that does not believe in um, 25th of yeah, December being, being uh, celebrated as um, the day for Christmas. So, right. my, my question to you, um, Rebecca Sally, is this, is it about the day or is it about the individual that's been celebrated. It doesn't matter. See, people have sent me all kind of information. It's a pagan day of celebrity when Constantinople, Constantine General Emperor said this, did that. Nobody could tell when Christ was born. It could be 15th of April, it could be 14th of March, it could be 25th of December. I tell them, look, forget the date. Forget the controversy surrounding a particular day. Nobody's disputing he was born. Nobody's disputing the Virgin Mary gave birth to him. Nobody's disputing the angels came to seeing shepherds celebrated him. Why, why, what the fuss about the date? Mm. So if you don't agree with the date, choose your day. Mm. My own point is I'm celebrating Christ's birth on 25th of December. And it's a great man and wise men will understand that beyond the day, let's celebrate the person at the birth. Mm. So I don't want to get involved or drawn into um, the controversy, the controversy of, of the date. Let's just forget all the dates and okay. let's look at the essence of the celebration. Christ was born. You can't tell me he wasn't born at all. <laughs> we have enough oh. facts and proofs that he was born. Yeah. So when I want to begin to put it, push a lot on the dates, I'm not involved in the dates. Archbishop, <laughs> I see you agreeing to certain things oh, he yes. said. Oh, yes. Okay? oh yes, there's no controversy about the dates. I don't want to. No, I perfectly agree with my brother. Because what is the, the, the important thing about Christmas is the essence of Christmas, the, the reason for the season. And Absolutely. Jesus Christ, in the Absolutely. and it should be celebrated every day anyway. Absolutely. Not only during Christmas, we should worship Him, we should adore Him, we should celebrate yeah. Him in our rooms, yeah. in our private yeah. devotion, yeah. in the church, openly, yeah. in, cruc in open, open uh, uh, crusade, uh, revival, or whatever. Let Jesus Christ be adored. Let Him be celebrated. Let Him be worshipped, because He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But there is no dispute that Jesus Christ was born. Mm. He was born. All right, now do you think Christians still recognize the essence of Christmas? We have said, we've agreed that the essence of Christmas is Jesus Christ. That's the reason for the yeah. season. Yeah. Do you think we have deviated or diverted the real meaning to some other things, Archbishop? Of course, of course, we all know that. We all know that, you know? Uh, to, to some people, Christmas time is time of just merry, mm. to wine and dine, eat chicken, eat rice, go to party. Uh, then even during this Christmas, uh, you just discover that uh, transport 
um, uh, fears yeah. are hyped. And then you see that uh, even Nigeria is, is, so, is, so, is so different. When you go to other parts of the world, during Christmas like this, sales are slashed. People get percent. I mean, 50% discount, thank you. 50% discount, 25% discount. But here, in the part of the world, rather than bringing it down, then the, uh, arbitrarily, without any reason for no cause, people just hike whatever. They just shoot up the price of commodities. Uh, yesterday, I was a little bit uh, shocked when I was looking for petrol to buy, and I discovered that... Uh, Simu, I, 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 we have a um, queue here and there. I say, oh, God, have mercy. I hope we are not going to be greeted with this kind of experience again. I mean, during Christmas, we are people should be rejoicing and things will come down and we are, but thank God I got petrol to buy. Mm -hmm. So thank God there's no petrol, no, uh, no, scarcity. no scarcity of petrol. <laughs> so we thank God for that. People have deviated mm -hmm. from the essence, from the real thing. And when you see the attitude of some people, you will know that they have not known Christ. They have not come to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is why our society has become what it has become. It's a time, as we celebrate Jesus Christ's birth, it's time to make people happy. Not only by eating rice and eating jollof rice. Yes, it's part of it. And it's part of showing love. But the real love, which is agape love, should be, should be practiced by our people. We should understand that Jesus Christ came. He offered himself without anybody forcing him. He gave himself to us. You know, leadership is about giving. Mm. Giving yourself, your service to people. That is where, that, beginning from parents at home, as parents, we should, we should show example of leadership, which Jesus Christ showed to the local government, to the state the government, government, and federal government. Let's, let's show true love and let us, let us rescue people from poverty. Let's rescue them from this oppression. Oppression is so much in our own land, in our own country. So please, we are just appealing to people to follow Jesus Christ because the essence of Christmas is expression of Christ, of, of God's love to humanity. <sighs> very well said, Archbishop, very well said. Um, let, me, let me take you on this, um, Reverend Kasali. Yeah. Who is Christ? What does Christ, what does Christ <laughs> represent? I mean, we're celebrating <coughs> Christ. What exactly does, let's bring it to nitty gritties. What exactly does Christ represent? I, I would answer that question by trying to take us back 2,000 years ago to the first Christmas, and I will try to <clears throat> extract three or four answers from that. Christ means different things to different people. To Herod, Christ was a threat, and he said, kill him. Kill mm. every young boy that's born two years and below. To the shepherds, Christ was a savior. They went to herald him and say, hey, someone's been born here. Mm and they celebrated the birth of Christ. To the wise men, Christ was a king that should be worshipped. And so Christ means different things to different people. But what the Bible says to us that Christ should mean to us is our savior, our love a giver, the, the love giver, the person that came to the world to die for our sins. But not too many people will receive him like that. They will see him from different angles. Just like saying, who is the President Buhari, for instance? To so many, is a despot. To so many, is a mere Messiah. So, so also with Christ. And for me, it must be personal. Mm. What the Bible tells us about Christ is the Son of God. Son of God, born of a Virgin Mary, which has been proven over time, died for mankind. God sent him to the earth to die to take away the sins of the world and then was, died and then rose up the third day to conquer death. And thereafter, those that will accept that work on the cross of Calvary will be saved. And then and they will accept him as a Lord and Savior. So that question is deep and it will have different answers to different people. For me, Christ is my Savior. All right, Archbishop, there was something you mentioned earlier. I want to bring you back to that. 
you said um, the attitude of some people, you mentioned about, you talked about the attitude of some people, and you said our society has become what it has become mm. based on the attitude of people. Mm. Now, if you look at Nigeria as a society, as a country, you realize that a good number of those who commit crime are Christians. And then on Christmas Day, we preach, you know, about peace, you know, and other virtues. On Easter, it's also preached. But the numbers of people who commit crimes increase by the day. Is it that um, people just listen to the message on Christmas Day or on Easter Day and then go back to their usual lifestyle? You know, uh, I've, I've said it times without number. Except you have the encounter with our Lord Jesus Christ, and your life has been touched by him, and you have become a changed person. You are born again. You are born anew. You, 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 you see, human beings by nature, we are corrupt. Let me, that is simple, all over the world. We are corrupt by nature. It is only true our encounter with grace of Christ, mm. that our lives mm. are made the way God wants it to be. Yeah. To purify us. Yeah. To make us his own people. He said, you, I think First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, he said, yeah. we, uh, it chosen said we are chosen generation. Royal priesthood. Holy nation. nation. Royal priesthood. priesthood. You see, all, all these kind of things shows that it is only by the grace of God in encountering Him that we can become what God what God wants us to be. You see crimes all over the world, not because everybody commits crimes, but let me just tell you, uh, uh, some people say, oh, the more the churches uh, proliferate, the more we have more churches, the more we celebrate uh, crimes. This, if you have in a family of ten, if you have one person that is bad among the family of ten, people will not see the, see the, the nine. The good nine. The good nine, thank you very much. People will not see the good nine. They will only see the bad ones. Ah, that family, ah, they are criminals. They are thieves, or this and that. But it is only one person that has marked the, 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 the family. So, it, it, let me tell you, we have genuine Christian people in, in this country. We have people that are really genuine. We have ministers of God that are genuine. We have Christians that are genuine. But the bad ones are the ones painting us in, in, a, bad in, in bad lights, even to the outside world. Oh. Yeah. We have good things happening in Nigeria. So I want to say again that since human being is criminal by nature, corrupt by nature, sinful by nature, it's only Jesus Christ the Savior that can save us from all of this, from corruption, from uh, criminality, from evil that we all, we all love to commit. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, has come to deliver us. You, you, you know, you know uh, Rebecca Sally, uh, why shouldn't we also think that um, to a large extent, the church, the church as an entity have not driven this message hard enough um, rather, we have seen some level of deviation. Uh, you hear this all the time that uh, to these churches, the message is all about prosperity and not, not about the kingdom, not about uh, the life after death. It's about uh, prosperity. Wouldn't, that, wouldn't, wouldn't, shouldn't we think that um, this obviously could be a reason why we have having a rise in criminality and then where, <coughs> where, where we have so much prosperity messages being preached in the church and then the people want to, you know, uh, being part, be, be a part of this prosperity that has been preached. We've had allegations where people, you know, after having committed crime, they still go to churches to pay their fights and they get blessed by a few men of God. All of this also brings, um, you know, brings to the fore this um, issue we look, we're talking about. Are you very correct. I would not sit here today to pretend like that's not a problem right now. And it's probably the scourge of the Christian church. And I would be very bold to say it we, before my Lord Bishop, that those of my own fold have been the ones that are more guilty, the Pentecostal fold of this uh, abuse of, um, of the pulpit and that haven't touched the morality of man. You see, prosperity 
There's nothing wrong with that. But without morality yeah. is a problem. Yeah. And sometimes when we push prosperity without morality, then we have criminality yeah. around us. Because you're saying anything goes. You're saying just bring the money in anyhow. Do Yahoo, kill, be corrupt, steal, take bribe. And, and so all that is not within the ethos, values, and virtues of the Christian faith. Truly, the yeah, Archbishop says something here. Man is corrupt. Ab initio, man is by nature corrupt. So maybe, maybe just maybe, a few of us um, also want to fleece or make money mm. off the body of Christ. Remember when Christ died on the cross of Calvary, some people said, hey, we can make money off this guy. Let's sell um, his underpants. So same, same, same with today. Some people see it as an, something we can make money off. Money and, and Exactly. And unfortunately, that's not what um, the church should be about. Mm. It should be about changing the lives of men changing the souls of men. Now, some may argue with me that changing the lives of men should also get to intellectual, material, wealth, and everything. We agree, but ultimately, and primarily our job as a church is to be salt of the earth, light of the world, not sugar. Mm. I keep preaching that. We don't just be sugar, we should be salt to season our generation, our community, our nation, our society. And to be a salt means morality. Now, my concern, is we do Christmas without the essence of morals. And it's important for us. Merriment, there's nothing wrong. Wine and die, nothing wrong. Some see it as a time to take break. You know, some members of my church have all traveled out of the country. Yeah. And I kept wondering, why would they travel? Tell me Christmas, I just want to take a break. It's not just a holiday, it's a holy season, hallowed season. So I think we've, we've misplaced our priorities. We've pushed the wrong things out of the door, and we brought the wrong things, I mean the right things out of the door, but the wrong things in. I think the church will get it right. A few leaders are emerging, a few pastors are emerging within, like you said, the Pentecostal fold, the Orthodox fold, trying to align forces to do the right thing. And God will help us all as we embark on that journey. So, Nasale, are you saying that um, this season shouldn't be an elaborate celebration should be more of solemn celebration. Absolutely. Um, my, that's absolutely my message. It's not a time to do a lot of concerts, a lot of frolicking around and partying and saying, oh, it's a holiday for me, just go and show my carnality and push some flesh out there. No. Christmas should be a time for people to spend time with their family members in church to reflect on their spiritual lives. And that's why I like it. It only comes towards the end of the year to also think deeply, wait a minute, Another year is coming to an end. Mm -hmm. What have I done for God, for mankind, for humanity, for my family, for mm -hmm. my loved ones, my friends, to evaluate your life? I'm going on a retreat. Usually I try to spend more time alone with God to have my own personal retreat, reflect on my last 12 months, project on my next 12 months, mm -hmm. and ask God how best to live one's life. Mm -hmm. It's a time to be reflective, sober, and also, that doesn't mean you should not go everywhere like a geriatric <laughs> and be sad and mourning. I'm not saying be mourning everywhere. You can see people some smile. Today I'm going to go home, spend time with my family after church service. My loved ones are coming in. We're going to eat some food. But I will spend more time with my family mm. and tell them the good things about God. Yes. Interesting. Uh, let's, let's, uh, let's look at um, our polity today and the Christian realm. How, how much? should Christians get involved in politics? Uh, uh, of course, it, it differs. Different for uh, will tell you uh, Christians shouldn't get involved in, in politics, and some other will tell you that, look, Christians who determine uh, who governs them. Uh, let, me, let me start with you, uh, Archbishop. How, how far should uh, Christians be involved in, in politics? Let, let me start with this scripture that says, when the righteous rule, yeah. people rejoice. Mm. And the, the other way around is when the wicked, wicked rule, then people, people mourn. Yes. Yeah. People cry, people mourn. Yeah. Um, it is only because of the way we practice uh, politics. Yeah. Politics is for righteous people. Absolutely. Politics, it is, it, I think it is for godly people. It's not for the ungodly people. Because God will not want ungodly, people, ungodly person to come and rule. His own people. We are God. <coughs> we are created by God. God made us in His own image. God is interested in our welfare. If anybody comes into the into the governance and he doesn't know the agenda of God for God's people, then people will cry. People will mourn because he will be doing. I mean, opposite of God of God's intent and will for people. We should 
we should elect people, vote for people that fear God, that understand the agenda of God for, God, for, for, for the people, people that we rule in the fear of God, that, that we show love to, the, to, the, to humanity. The same way, because God is the, is the ruler of us all. We all, you know, all other rulers should just <coughs> emulate or they, they should even emanate from God and emulate God in ruling. God, but in, the, in the book of Matthew chapter 5, the Bible says, For God show his love to us, he, he, he make his, his, his rain to fall on the righteous yeah. and on the righteous. He make the sun to rise shine, and yeah. shine on the righteous and the wicked the same way. Anybody who is the ruler is standing in the position that, I'm not saying it's God, but it's, it's standing maybe, maybe in the position. It's a semi-god. It's a semi-god. No. Yes, he, 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 must, he must try and imbibe the character of God. Yeah. To care for people. Most of our leaders, they don't have the fear of God. They don't care for human beings. We don't care what happens to community, to people, to the society. Whether people are hungry, whether people are... If you go to some of our schools, you will, you will weep. Public schools. When you go to some of our <coughs> healthcare, uh, uh, when you go to healthcare system, yeah. when you go to some of the hospitals, you will cry. They say no drug, no this, no that. I mean, okay, for, 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 for instance, most of us, I don't know what is happening with you, but I provide water for myself. Mm. I provide light for myself. Most of the time, I'm on generator. And it's not easy for me even to get diesel to, not that the, the diesel is there, but it's so costly. How many of us can afford even the petrol to be able to, to, to power a generator. So all these kind of things, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't show that we, we understand God. So Christians should go into politics, righteous one, <laughs> people who fear God, people who are ready even to, to stake their life for righteousness because righteousness exalts the, the nation. And the, Seems a and, and they say it's a reproach, it's a reproach, reproach to people. To people. All right, Reverend Kassana, I see you, you know, agreeing to certain totally. things you said. Uh, the Archbishop has said that um, Christians should go into uh, politics for the right reasons, of course. But we, we, we know that, um, especially during election period, politicians go to churches to ask for prayers. Uh, we've also heard some pastors preach on the pulpit in favor of a pastor or of a politician. <laughs> Uh, do you think <coughs> that's the right step for <coughs> pastors or Christians to... Wrong. Very wrong. Christians okay. should be involved in politics. Churches should not be partisan. Christians, that's the balance. Christians should be involved in politics. Individuals, just as Christians are involved in business. But churches should never be partisan. Neither should bishops be partisan. To go to your pulpit and say, vote for this. It's wrong, it's unethical, it's against our ethos in ministerial practice or pastoral ethics? You shouldn't. Even if you have a private um, the inclination towards a party, you should never use the pulpit to campaign <coughs> for a party. It's almost like you saying, in my church, I'm going to support MTN. That's not right. Members of ATL are in my church. Staff that work in a particular computer are in my church. Or I say, no, 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 I just want STV, no, Silverbed. No. Somebody in my church works for TVC, works for NTA. I should be very careful. I say, no, no, I want to just support Zenith Bank and I go to my church pulpit. All of you bank with Zenith. That's not fair. That's unethical. Members of GT Bank are in my church. Fidelity Bank are in my church. So also with a party, <coughs> churches should not be partisan. Bishops, church fathers should not be partisan. We should preach righteousness. We should preach what is right. But Christians should be encouraged to go out there and be involved in politics. Hmm. I hope I balanced it. Yeah. Uh, because that's I'm looking, I'm wondering where do I draw the line? That's that's <laughs> where it, that's it, a typical it, position. It's, it's pretty clear. Um, I mean, you you're able to you you are able to distinguish the yes. politics and partisanship. And politics. Yeah. Yes, partisanship and politics. Yes. Yeah. So that 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 is pretty very clear. Um, let me just um, chip this in. Um, 
Rebecca Sally. A couple of days back, there was a report from the U.S. that Nigeria uh, was placed on a watch list, on a on the watch list of um, a religious intolerance um, um, country, uh, countries rather. Uh, how does this? How does this? I mean, hit you? How does this bother you? Uh, well, um, my, my view. I'm, I'm a bit. Um, I'm not too sure. I want to agree with the U.S. Um, assessment of our, of our nation. Um, of course, we've had over the last 50 years issues back in the north, in certain areas in the northern part of the country, where they where they are very intolerant with the Christian faith and Christians, and the jihadists. Which, if you understand Islam, I, I was a Muslim, and in the Muslim faith, there are those that are called the Sunnis and the Shiites. Yeah. The Shiites are those that are a bit more fundamentalist, and there's another group now, which some of my sisters now belong to, they're a bit more radical. And, but my father had seven wives, had um, 16 children. Some of us became Christians, some of us are still Muslims. And then we still have family affairs together. I mean, Southwestern, obviously. And we do not see ourselves as enemies. We respect our faith. My father was Muslim before he died, and my mother. And they both respected my faith when I became a Christian. When I got married in church, uh, they sent their people. They came. My father was there. My mother was there because my father didn't come. But for the reception, they were there. And they understood that. And they said, oh, that's his faith. And that, that's what he has chosen. They didn't consider me an enemy. However, in the North, unfortunately for us, uh, people that have not been enlightened enough, or in my opinion, educated enough to understand uh, how to tolerate people when they make their individual decisions. So the, the, when you say Nigeria as a nation, um, I, I would disagree. It, it, some part of our country, people that are intolerant, some of these things, my opinion, yeah. are whipped up by some mischievous politicians just to ensure that there is a um, crisis in the polity. Uh, but for me, I, I would be very careful how we get all this um, data from the U.S., and I will begin to run. Of course, I agree with the U.S. Um, opinion on freedom of speech. And surely that's what we released. And I, I think that was quite overboard. I totally agree that they should have been released quite a long time ago. Respect a rule of law and court judgments. Any sane government should respect the rule of law and, and court judgments. And that's where we start the balance. All right, I'll be sure. Rebecca Sally talked about evaluating and reflecting uh, on the year, the past 12 months, and what you plan to do for the next 12 months. So perhaps um, this next question might help change certain agenda for next for the next 12 months. Now, in in many churches, uh, we see a lot of people giving offering. Uh, some people call it tithes, some people call it first fruits, and um, different <laughs> names they give it in in the churches. And then there is a university built by the church. But hardly would you find an average church goer able to afford such universities, which is quite sad for a lot of parents who can afford to put their children in such universities. Do you think that going forward, that narrative should change? Uh, well, you know, one has to understand certain things before you uh, just make your comments. Because when you, when you see what it takes to establish a university, Methodist Church in Nigeria, we, uh, we started about for more than 10 years ago, uh, close to 15 years ago. But let me tell you, we don't find it easy at all to run, to run the university. We don't find it easy. My, one of my I mean, children uh, went to uh, Bowe University. Uh, owned by Baptist Church, and uh, something, something like that. I, I'm just trying to be fair and be, I mean, be honest about it. And uh, I, I met some of the leaders of the Baptist Church. They also narrated their own uh, plight. Uh, Ajay Crowder, you know, all these are owned by Orthodox churches. Anglican owned by Ajay Crowder. I, I, I know how much, but we should be very, very careful uh, because if we take all these. Call it tight, first fruit, general, don general donation of the members of the church to establish a university. And at the end of the day, uh, some of them could not afford to, uh, to, uh, I mean, to, to go to the university that is being owned by the church. 
Uh, I mean, it's not good enough. But let me let, let, let me let me let me say, let me say this: like a Methodist church, what we do that if you are a member of the Met of Methodist church and you want to go to our university, we 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 have a percentage uh, that we uh, discount. a kind discount. Thank you very much. A discount that we give at <coughs> for a member that intends or that really want to uh, go to our university. So I, I think uh, each each. Um, University universities owned, 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 by, owned by, churches. By, by churches should should consider this kind of things also to, to to encourage members of their church. But let me say it again: it is not <coughs> easy to run a university. If you get involved, you will know what it takes to run a university. So, and unfortunately, even some of the university they don't have enough uh, enough uh, students to be able to be able to even cater for the life of the university, pay the lecturers, do this and do that. So, well, but we have to be very careful so that we don't oppress, see missionaries when they came. Most of us went to missionary uh, established so, schools. For free. Yeah, for free. For free. I will thank God for who we are today. And if not because uh, our public schools have become what they have become, uh, there's no need for uh, for multiplying private uh, universities just to, to make profit. It shouldn't be to make profit for the church, but to plow back mm. and help the society, bring up the less privileged, and encourage Christianity to grow. Okay, I think we've said so much um, about the Christian dom. Um, okay. uh, let's, let's look at, let's just stay with Christmas, Reverend Kasani. How how much do you hope to give back at Christmas in, in tandem with the reason for the season? It's about giving, it's about sharing and showing love. How, how much do you intend to give? As much as I possibly can do. Depends on my resources, but beyond my treasure, um, I should give my time um, to help the poor, less privileged. Usually when we speak giving, people think of treasure alone. And of course treasure is very important because it reveals who you are, which is your money and your resources. But beyond that, give your time to serve humanity. Go to an orphanage home and, and show some love. I mean, by the way, he was born almost like an orphan, of course not yeah. in literal sense. Go to an orphanage home and show some love. Take a few bags of rice if you can afford it and go to some old people's home and show some love. Go to your neighbors. This, for me, it's a time to show love to live at peace with all men. Yeah. For that's the message of Christmas. Those who have not called in long while, call them. Forgive people. Mm -hmm. That's why I say we should reflect more than express our uh, acknowledgements, no, no, you know, no. but just reflect more and say, hey, what can I do differently at this time? That's how much we should give. We should give our time, talent, of course, and our treasure as much as we can possibly release. That's what I would do. All right, your response sounds like um, the generality of Nigerians what we should do today and even beyond today, I understand there are 12 days of Christmas, but beyond ordinary Nigerians, what, Archbishop, what would be your expectation from the government at all levels this season? We are very, very concerned about the governance of this nation. Um, and uh, sometimes I, I, I feel uncomfortable, I'm sorry to express this way, mm. And uh, that's why I say, I, I was saying the other time that leadership should pattern after God. Yeah. Should pattern after God. Very correct. You see people suffering. You don't fold your arms yeah. as, a gov as, a, uh, uh, I mean, uh, as a government. Government should be, should be em em empathic and should be sympathetic as well. Should, should enter into the feelings of the people. Yeah. Should understand the plight of his, of, we are, they are shepherds. Leaders of uh, uh, governance, they are shepherds. They should look after the nation, well-being, let the road be okay, let there be water, the light, let the, the, I don't know why all these years we are still struggling with making, I mean, a power supply. You just throw some I, I can't, I cannot understand for heaven's sake. And some people are saying, maybe those who are in uh, 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 generator uh, <laughs> business. business, they they are in government, they don't want lights to come. Please let them listen to us. 
I mean, I traveled also almost to every part of the world. I, I've never seen experience like this, even in African countries. This is, this is, this is not too good for us. I, I, as I'm talking, I don't want to get, get emotional. Yeah, it, 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 we, should, we should please, uh, uh, I mean, to reevaluate ourselves and uh, get, uh, get it next right. God will help our, 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 our leaders. Our leaders. Yeah. God will help our leaders. And, and for you, yeah. Reverend Kasali, yeah. what, what would you be expecting from governance? From governance? I, I agree with my Lord and Bishop. I agree. Um, it's very depressing that we haven't been able to fix some basic things in this country. And I, I've always said that at the bane of our problem is that nature of corruption. Until, we're very deceitful. We're very deceitful people. We're not being sincere with ourselves. Um, we have to fight corruption together. We have to agree. I don't even know what the corruption loot has been used for. You know, maybe we need more accountability from leadership. But I know that as they plow the funds back into the system, it's been eaten again by corruption. corruption. So I, I, I am, I don't know, I've, I'm lost for words. I think the church, I've seen revolutions taking place over the world. You find clergy, religious leaders pushing it. Mahatma Gandhi in, in India, Martin Luther King Jr. in the in, in, uh, US. Yes. Mandela was a moral leader. Listen, Archbishop, I've been saying this for the last seven years, and I throw this to Silverbird. I would be glad if you can name, if you can go on a spree in Nigeria, 2020. Let's mention five moral leaders in this country. We lack them. Of 200 million people, we don't have moral leaders. I didn't say politicians. I didn't say businessmen. I didn't say pastors. I'm not saying bishops. I say mm. moral mm. leaders. That's mm. the problem in Nigeria. We don't have moral leaders. I've challenged people to give me five names. It's been difficult to get five names. Five. Mm. One, two, five moral leaders in Nigeria today. That's how the shows are built. Go and check it. All over the world. If you go to my office, you find four pictures on the wall in my office. Nelson Mandela, Mahatma Gandhi, Mother Teresa, and Martin Luther King Jr. People have come in, sir, who are these? I said, they're moral leaders. You won't see a picture of a bishop there. These are my own mentors, my role models. I would love to be like this man to change my nation. Somebody stayed in prison for 27 years. That's a moral leader. He came out, they begged him to be present for certain saying, I don't want to be. They forced him. One time, he stepped away. Moral leader has a very strong sense of right and wrong. wrong. Regardless of tribe, race, faith. If my brother is doing this wrong, I say, my brother, you are wrong. Uh, so what? Uh, is he the only one stealing? Uh, it's because you're Yoruba, because it's Igbo. Please, please, stealing is stealing. But I Igbo, Yoruba, I would say, stealing is stealing. Do not, that's why we lack moral leaders. Until Nigeria, if you can give me five, I will probably find something to give to you. Five. Today, when they, when they steal, they don't steal according to their. There's no naira in Yoruba or naira in Igbo. It's one naira, so stealing is stealing. Exactly, you get my right. point. In running of in running of this segment, uh, you are the head of your church. You are the Archbishop of the Methodist in Lagos. Uh, maybe your co congregation might be expecting to see you at the first service. Either the first, of course, there should be a first service today. What would be your message to them today? Let's begin with you and then Archbishop. What would be your message for those I, that will miss your I, I'm, presence? Well, I'm going to try to preach in the service right now, so okay, my message is very clear. Yes. Okay. Is the message, the magic, and the miracle of Christmas. The miracle is the virgin birth. The message is to love all men. The magic, in quote, is the fact that five wise men, not three, wise men from through Maggie, they saw a star of he that was born. So I'm going to push the message of Christmas, which is peace and love in our society. All right. Occupation? Yes. Uh, the message is straightforward. Jesus Christ has come to establish a kingdom. <clears throat> this kingdom is God's kingdom. It means that anybody that comes under the rules of yeah. God is already in his yeah. kingdom. Right. Yeah. And such people, they will, they will listen to God, they will hear God, they will do the will of God, they will go and, uh, 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 I mean, preach the message, message of, 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 of Christ to the whole world. When you are in the kingdom or on, in the kingdom of, of Christ, then you should be like Jesus Christ and let people see Jesus Christ in your life. And let people see Jesus Christ in your life. That's the final word of the Archbishop of Lagos Methodist Church, Nigeria, Archbishop Isaac Olawi. And 
Reverend Yamika Sally, thank you for coming on the show this morning. Thank there you. could never be a better time to discuss Christmas. Christmas, Jesus is the reason for the season. Mm -hmm. Season to show love, um, forgive, um, peace, unity, and good covenants. Uh, we'll take a break and when we come back, our conversation will begin. Uh, next conversation will start rather. Uh, don't go away. Say something. Without. We'll say no.